Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. I'm here once again with my co-worker Frankie. Frankie say hi. Um, so I have a fun one today. I have lots of plants in the shop that need to be chopped. So I thought I'd bring you along with me and we can propagate some plants. I do have, um, I'm sorry, I'm looking at it off camera, my personal Monstera Aria that has lived in the front shop. If anybody's visited here, you've probably seen it. It has really, really outgrown the pole that it's currently on. So it is getting the chop today. As well, I have some Monstera Albos in the back that I'll be chopping up. So hopefully you enjoy it. Let's get right into it. All right, I'm back with the Aria here. It's a little hard to show you on the screen here because she is just so big, but let me try and I'll tilt it down. As you can see, it has just grown crazy. So, first foremost, little spray with some alcohol. Always want to make sure you have your sterilized choppers. And I'm going to just do it. And now we have, so this is the newest leaf here. The last leaf. This one's beautiful. <clears throat> this one, this one, and this one. So we're working with some nice aerial roots here. This thing is crazy. It actually sits beside my Hoya Curtisii by the window and one of the aerial roots. I just had to chop it off actually. I don't know which one it is. Maybe it was this one. No, um, I had to chop the root off because it had grown into the Curtisii pot. It's crazy. I'm excited to regrow this portion of it. But I think I'm just going to take a top cutting for myself to regrow and I'll probably root out the other leaves and sell them. So if you want to chop away with me, let's chop. So usually when I'm chopping, I always make sure it's going to be hard to show here, but I always want to have a longer portion of the stem and then I usually just cut right above the node. So this way, you know, if your stem, ooh, <laughs> if the stem starts to rot for any reason, you have a little bit of room to play with and chop it up when, if you need to. So here we go. Let's see if I can get this on here. So I'm, your node is right here, connected by the leaf, and chop, ooh. And then this guy. That one went off the table. <laughs> and then this leaf. And I think I'm going to keep this three leaf top cutting to grow out. So we have this leaf, and this leaf, and then this one. So I think that's a nice, nice one. Let's see. It's nice. And this leaf I think is my favorite, but it's, it's grown quite a nice size. All right, so I ended up with three cuttings. I have this one, which has some nice aerial roots to work with. And then we have this guy, some nice variegation. And again, some nice aerial roots to work with. And this one, which is gorgeous. Let's see if you can see it. And the aerial root on this is just, it's insane. It's like, whoa. Whoa. It's a good three feet, four feet. So lots to work with. There's actually some nice kind of activated new roots happening already there. So these should propagate pretty easily. 
and I still have the mother plant here that will continue growing and it is just as pretty look at that leaf is so gorgeous let's see this one it's so large it's hard to show you guys <laughs> this one look at those inner fenestrations so pretty so I am going to let these uh, sit out for a little bit to get the ends to callus before I put them in anything and make sure they're nice nice and callous before they hit any moisture. All right, so on to our elbows. So with the elbows today, I wanted to show you where I would chop an elbow and some in an instance where I wouldn't chop an elbow. Their variegation is very unstable you, you really want to if you're going to chop your elbow you want to make sure you have a nice node that looks like there's some variegation in there and you know from my experience if you chop something where it's green nine times out of ten you're gonna get a green plant from that node so if you're only chopping down to a single node and it's green kind of sucks right so you want to kind of keep that in mind when you're chopping your plant that you want to make sure that you see some variegation on the node the stem doesn't really matter the petiole doesn't matter it's really the placement of that auxiliary bud or that node where your new growth is going to come from that matters so we have this plant here these plants are big it's hard to show you but uh so we have this one. This is kind of a good example. So this plant is more variegated on one side than it is on the other. And that boils down to the fact, let me take these guys out, that the stem on this side, if you can see, the stem is fairly variegated. So every leaf that has come from this side of the stem is variegated whereas this side is quite green so the leaves that are coming out from this side are more green and less variegated this one so for me chopping this plant I am going to be looking at the nodes to see what they look like before I would even consider chopping this plant so when I say nodes or auxiliary bud, um, each leaf will have an auxiliary bud, which means if you were to chop it above the, the bud, auxiliary bud, a new plant will grow from there. So when I'm having a quick peek at this, and I didn't even look at it before I brought it out here, so I'm going to have a quick look. So here's one where the node... I hope you can see this on camera right here so this is your leaf and your node will usually be right below or sorry above the leaf I'm gonna see if I can bring it in here so there's a little bump right here that you can see is in a pretty good spot where this variegation is showing here so I am gonna chop it just above the node there so let's see how to do this on camera. So we're going to chop it right. Oh, hang on. There. So this will be my top cutting, which is quite nice. Let's see if we can get the whole thing in there. <laughs> it's hard to work with big plants in front of a camera. So that's my top cutting. Now, where I've cut this, you can see the auxiliary bud is right there and it's, it's nicely variegated. So there, this has a good chance that it's gonna be a nicely variegated plant coming out of that auxiliary bud. Now down one node lower, the auxiliary bud is on this side and this side is very green 
and the axillary bud is actually kind of right, so it's right there, in a very green part of the stem. So I'm actually not going to cut this plant any further. I'm going to let this growth come out and grow, continue growing from there. Once that's grown, you know, I might decide to cut it and see what happens with this one, but I would say it's pretty likely that that is going to be mostly green, if not all green. Um, looking farther down, I'm not even going to show you because it's so hard to see, but this one, the one farther down, does look like it has potential, so, you know, I could cut it up and, you know, I might lose this one or this, this one might revert, but going farther down, it might not. I chop everything, so I could lose a node, and I have hundreds of these, so for me, it doesn't, it doesn't matter, because I can take the loss. I, I don't sell anything. Like, when I'm chopping, I will not chop something for sale, unless I think that there's a great chance that that's going to be variegated. If it looks too green, I won't chop it. And if I do chop it, I'm not selling it because I want you guys to have the best chance of a nicely variegated elbow. So hopefully I'm making sense when I say this. If there's any questions about it, I can, you can always message me. Okay, I'm back with a couple more. So another thing about elbows that I'm always looking for before I chop them is I want to make sure that there are some aerial roots. So as you can see, both of these and the last one they've got some nice aerial roots to work with um, so I always check the node before I chop so that I make sure it's in a good both these ones have pretty good stems all the way around so I'm not too concerned that the the nodes are not going to be variegated but I'll show you here so I think I'm going to keep these top three leaves well, two and a half, this one's just coming out. Um, and chop it back down to right here. So I'll do that like that. And then we've got that top cutting. It's cute. And even this one's great, so I'm gonna chop a couple of single nodes on this one too. We've got, this is the next node down below, and you can see it's nicely variegated. So we'll give that guy a chop. Again, I'm keeping as much stem on the bottom as I can, um, just in case something happens and it rots. But as you can see, so that one's got the nice node there, and a nice leaf. And then I'll probably do one more. This leaf is not amazing. It's got some browning on it, but the node right here is gorgeous. You can see that, and it has a nice little aerial root. So again, always checking your node below because you don't wanna chop this one thinking this has a great node and then the bottom one doesn't and then the whole mother bottom plant revert. So you always have to look at both nodes. Um, but again, I'm this one has a fantastic marbly node below. So we're gonna chop her right there. We're left with just this bottom, some, you know, older leaves on plants. They don't always look the best. Some browning, very normal for an elbow, but we're left with these three. Super cute still. And so same thing with this guy. I'm gonna look, I'm probably gonna keep the top three leaves. Check my node. And node looks good. So chop. Beautiful. That guy. And we've got another cute one right here. So we'll chop this guy and probably this guy because they both have aerial roots. So we'll go chop and chop. So 
of those two. Okay, I've gone headless for this portion of this. I just wanted to quickly show you uh, usually what I do with the propagations after I've cut them because we don't want these aerial roots to dry up as the ends are drying. So for a mid cut, what I'll do is I'll usually just pop it in sideways in the pot, keeping the ends of the stem out of the pot, just so we're keeping that aerial root moist while the ends are drying and callusing. Usually I'll either put a stake here to hold it up because it's not gonna wanna stand on its own or if I don't have a steak candy, I literally just tape it to hold it up. So I'll tape it like that. And this is very temporary. When you tape it, make sure you're not getting your end tape. I usually leave it for about a week. Um, so you can see my little, my little DIY setup. So I leave it like this for a week. Once I know that the ends are very well calloused, then I will pot it all the way in to the moss. So same thing with a top cut. I want to leave this out to callus, but I don't want these lovely aerial roots to dry up. So I usually hang it, so aerial root in the pot, hang this off the side so it's out of the pot and didn't bring enough moss with me so this isn't going to be done, but I'll put a little bit of tape like so doesn't look great but it works so taped to the side the end is out the end is not taped you don't want to put tape over your end because you want it to be able to dry out from the air so I just do this like this I'll go fill this pot with moss and again leave it like this for a week or so. You don't want to leave it like this for too long because as you can see, it's not straight. Uh, you don't want your plant to all of a sudden start growing funny because it's sideways. But I find this is a good way of allowing that end to really callous and not get rot. So it's one thing I do around here. It's a little bit extra work. There's some extra steps in it, but seems to work for me and then once this is potted so after a week or so I'll pot it right in and as you can see there's a second uh, aerial root there that wants to pop out so once it's kind of deeper in the pot we'll be able to get some moss around that one for it to start rooting out as well but in the interim that is what I do well, that's it for me today, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. I do hope to upload more videos soon. I know I haven't uh, said when I'll be uploading and that was intentional. Uh, I'm a busy mom and business owner and I don't want to promise something that I can't follow through with. So my goal is to upload weekly. However, life happens sometimes, so I may not. But I'm going to try my best. I don't have a set day or time. It'll just be a surprise when they upload. I hope you enjoyed this and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.